Hello, children. Are you ready for some cutting up and kikiing? Are you ready for a gay old time? Well, I hope you are, because now it's time for Hey Queen with your host, Johnny McGovern. Hey Queen, come on and spill the tea. Hey Queen, it's just a good old fashioned kiki. Hey Queen, we're cutting up with Johnny. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, my spectacular faggoty children, and welcome to another iconic episode of Hey Queen, with me, your host, Johnny McGovern. Oh, we have another legend in the building today, darlings. The one, the only, Miss Coco Peru is here. Yeah! yeah. And she brought along her friend, Sasha Soprano, to tell us all about the Drag Queens of Comedy show in San Francisco. Today's episode is presented by Dragaholic. Thank you, Dragaholic. It's going to be such a good episode. I'm excited. But before we bring them out, I have a very special someone I have to introduce. She's Bruce Jenner's life coach. She's the basis for at least six Tyler Perry movies. And she may or may not be Shonda Rhimes' illegitimate scandal baby. It's Miss Lady Red Couture. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, hello, Lady Rooster. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are we matching again? Wait, not this even on is purpose? Crazy. Oh my goodness. You look great in blue, though. Oh, thanks. So do you. I think they're going to give you a lot of great comments and feedback. Oh. Mm. Bling. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Twin Powers. Yes, form of Team Bush. That's right. For, we're form of Navy How today. About that? Yes, baby. How about that? You're looking good. I'm fine, baby. I'm just trying to keep up with these young girls, you mm -hmm. know. So sometimes you have to make it look a little older so they'll appreciate you and your wisdom. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> That's good. Is that where the rooster lady yes, hands come in? Yes, you know, I'm a little older girl. Just trying to be, you know. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is a hairdo. I'm from like a late '90s type of black woman hairdo. Okay, yeah, you know, and it reminds me of like the Christian counselor, you know. Oh yeah, because she wanted to seem hip, so she spent all night flat ironing her shit <laughs> so that she could look like she's young with the kids. Mm, oh, you like? I'm gonna get them kids. I got them. I, I got them. Yeah. My, my, my pumpkin rooster hairdo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, keep them, keep them fresh. I'm hip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Coco Peru is here today. I'm so excited. Legendary, darling. This is a fan snap. Yeah. Legendary, darling. And she's so petite, little old mm. bitch. How dare she? How dare How she? Dare she? At least she could gain some fucking weight and make me feel better. <laughs> you know, Coco Peru has a lot of videos where she's always shopping in yes. Target yes. or Walgreens or wherever. And it reminded me of you and I after the show every week. <laughs> Going to pavilion. Yes, <laughs> Or as I like to call it, pavillon. Pavillon. Because it makes it sound fancy. Yes. Because uh, <laughs> it's very funny that we just happen to be going there, yeah. but it's lately turned into like a Sally Field and soap dish type of thing it where is. we can go for a self-esteem boost. Yes, if we ever feel bad. <laughs> if we ever feel bad, just go to the West Hollywood Pavilion. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to meet us, we're usually there <laughs> yeah. Thursday afternoons yeah. right at the show. We've had a lot of different people mm -hmm. uh, come and talk to us, say stuff. Right. That's where the mayor of West Hollywood Followed me for three aisles yes, and then got the courage then to say, he said tap, tap, tap. I just want to let you know, um, well, I'm the mayor. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, mayor, I recognize you. I just want to let you know I love Hey Queen. <laughs> it's so gay and out there. You can see it from space. And I'm like, you're right. You're right about that. And then we were there the other day. Oh, God. And this was so cute. There, we were looking for taco seasoning. Yes. Because we were going to have a taco party with taco the crew party. after the show. Yes, dude, and so dude. we went and got our beef and whatever and looked for taco seasoning. Yeah. And we saw a little sock boy running through the aisles. We're like, uh, excuse me, you want to tell us where the taco seasoning is? And he then, at the same time, he was like, what? And someone kind of bumped him from yeah. the back. And then he had to get out of the way. And then we finally got back to him and we were like, oh, I'm so sorry to like, get you uh, caught in the middle of a traffic jam yeah. there. And he was like, no, no, that wasn't it. Are y'all from Hong Kong? Yes, yes. I was like, well, yes, we are. Maybe she got her life. And then found, did she find you on Instagram? Oh, no, did you find you on Instagram? Maybe she found me that night <laughs> and approved like 13 pictures. She was like, bing, bing, bing. 
I was like, oh. <laughs> and then I went and looked at her Instagram. And at first, I didn't know who she was because, you know, in her Instagram, she's sick. Oh, and then okay. in real life, she's like, I'm a stock boy, you know? <laughs> right. I like that he had a sexy Instagram. Oh, yeah, it was a little strange at first, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He's a multifaceted. Just because you're a stock boy at yes, Pavillon doesn't saying. mean you don't have a sexy Instagram. Come on mm -hmm. now. She taught me a few things. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, Lady Red. Do I need to fan <laughs> you? Oh, think about that stock boy and the spicy taco seasoning. Oh, let it wet. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Oh, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> Don't pop that's your tongue, bitch. I'm bed. sorry, you know I ain't Don't talking. Don't pop my tongue, bitch. Don't believe in Don't talking. pop my tongue, bitch. <laughs> Don't pop my tongue, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> bitch. Don't pop my tongue. You already know why. <laughs> yes. I do know why. Once you pop my tongue, you're fucked. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Never has it been said better before. <laughs> All right, well, let's get the show started. All right, I'm excited <laughs> for these girls, baby. Yes, uh, we'll be uh, back with Coco Peru and Sasha Soprano after this very gay break. Yeah! Oh. Oh. guest today is a motherfucking legend. You've seen her in movies like Trick, Wigstock, Girls Will Be Girls, and of course, millions of videos on her own YouTube channel. Let's take a look at some of her most amusing latest work. Hello, my Coco Puffs. I'm Coco Peru, and I am sitting here in my dressing room getting ready for my show, Have You Heard? And I was thinking, you know, I have a few extra minutes, so I thought I'd take a little time to address the fact that some of you uh, really enjoy making your own videos uh, imitating my Bronx accent. And I tell you, I find it so charming. So I thought, why not give a lesson in how to speak authentic Bronx? All right, and I thought I'd use a term that we Bronxites like to use. Are you friggin' kidding me? Okay, so we'll start with, uh, are you friggin' kidding me? 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 And when kids are in the room, are you fucking kidding me? They have to learn somewhere. Why not for me and Coco? <laughs> hey, queen! And here she is, Miss Coco Peru! Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Gwen! Hey, I keep looking at myself. Okay. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello, how are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm so, so happy to, to get you here. to finally be here. Yes. What time was I here, Johnny? You were here very early. Very, you were here at 9.45 9 45. a.m. 9.45, thank you. 9.45. 9.45, because Lady Randy and I got here at 9.30. <laughs> yeah. Normally, the uh, guests are called at 10, but they're drag queens, so they're late. But yeah. 9.45, okay. 15 minutes before she was supposed to be here. Thank you. Coco showed up like, what? Hello? What? A pro. Where, A where pro. are we? You are a professional. Yes. yes. And then she heard we were starting filming at 11. She said, what? No. <laughs> what is 11? What's what is this? It's just, I caused a little bit of a scene. You're like, I'm oh sorry. my God, this is, what? Uh, <laughs> let me get out my email. So I'll find an email. I'll find <laughs> an did. email, Johnny. I did. I went there, Johnny. <laughs> well, don't worry. I wanted to, to soothe you. So <gasps> I brought you some tension oh, tamer tea. I know like, you. you like your tension tamer, Coco. <laughs> I do. Look at you this. You like your tension tamer. Only oh, the best here. Thank you. Only Thank the you. best for you here at Hey. Queen, darling. Yeah. You know, I think the sales of this really uh, helped this company. I didn't get yeah. it. You know what they they sent me? 
Six boxes. Six boxes? Six boxes and a free tour if I ever end up in Colorado. <laughs> a free tour? What <laughs> happens at the Celestial Seasons factory that I don't can know. watch? But there's catnip in this. There's cat you, is that yeah. why you like it so much? I think that that's why, why so I like it. I like the catnip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Lady Rad, do you, do you like catnip tea? No. No. No, look at her <laughs> munching on that fried chicken over there. I like weed in my tea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll know when to get you next time I'll stop at the weed area. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Coco, so you're about to get ready to do a big show in San Francisco. Correct. Drag Queens of Comedy. Mm -hmm. And that was actually the last time we saw each other was when, during the original Drag Queens of Comedy show during Sketchfest in San Francisco. That's right. In 2000, I think that was 11. 2011, yes. yeah. Yes. So there was Big A Sketch Show. You were doing that the whole big Drag Queens of Comedy show, and mm -hmm. it's been continuing going. Yeah, we've done it almost every year since then. Amazing. And, and Sasha uh, contacted me and asked me if I wanted to do this, and I, I didn't really know Sasha. But I, I was, I love helping young people that, are, like, have, Big dreams. Yeah. And um, and then I found out she's actually rich. <laughs> wow. You, know? you were like, So I'm like, I'm in. I'm, I'm really in. I'm in. <laughs> this, this girl can actually pay me. Exactly. And you that know? is very That's important. important. Very important. You know? But anyway, no, and I was so charmed by um, his just enthusiasm wanting to do this. And what had happened was, um, well, I should let him tell the story, but his mom basically said, what do you want for your birthday? And uh -huh. he said, I want to do a show at the Castro. Oh, my goodness. So she rented the Castro, and uh, and he, he he put the show together. And I'm telling you, it's the most, she's the most professional uh, queen I've ever worked with, really, put, put together a fabulous show. And if there, she lives up to your high professional yes, standards, yes, that's yes. good. Shout out, see you in a few minutes, Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have a your your whole thing as Coco Peru has uh, always had a sort of an undercurrent of empowering messages and self acceptance. So it's good to see you working with the young kids and with all the with the drag race queens and still keeping your message out there. Oh yeah, I feel enduring. I feel yeah. No, I'm I'm really blessed that I have lasted this long, and and you know you show those silly that silly video. YouTube, like when I started drag, yeah. there was no internet. Yeah. You know, I was out every night passing out postcards yeah. to strangers, <laughs> going into clubs to do a set, to you know try and build up an audience, and spray painting on sidewalks. I had made a, a thing that said, Miss Coco Peru, she knows. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> How mysterious. <laughs> it was mysterious. <laughs> she knows. And that's what, so people were walking around this New York City going, what the hell does she know? <laughs> and who is Coco Peru? And who is, who is she? <laughs> So I built and I and I and I built up an audience that way, and that's the way you had to do it yeah. back then, you know. But nowadays with YouTube, it all happens so fast. It happens so fast. Yeah. And so I started doing these YouTube videos just really as a goof, and now I have like I have 11, 12, 13, 14 year olds coming to my shows with their parents. Amazing. And it's really beautiful. And I just did a big event in Iowa to keep schools safe in Iowa. Oh, yeah. 1,000 kids. It started off with 100 a few years ago. Now it's up to 1,000 kids. And of course, there's all this religious backlash. Right. But uh, distorting what the weekend was really about. But those kids were so great, and they know me from YouTube. Yeah, that's and amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, and I and I feel I feel lucky. I don't I don't take it for granted. I I, I think it's a huge blessing. When you started in the 90s uh, in New York, that was actually a very rich time yep, mm -hmm. for drag in New York. Yeah. Where there were shows, and if you wanted to see drag, it wasn't just in the club at midnight. Right. You could go to like little theaters and see all that stuff. Yeah. And you really had to, as a drag queen then, make your audience, find your audience, build up your performance skills. You also had to do something really, really special. Yeah. And be really, I have to say, I think like, Discipline, like I find my freedom in being disciplined, uh -huh. and I think that um, that's how you get. That's how back then you got noticed. Like yeah. you know, you had something to offer, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, when you think back to a lot of those queens back then, they all had some like Joey Arias, yeah. and, and Raven, and all these people doing. They all had something special. Yeah, they each to had offer. their own their special thing. thing yeah. their, and their, that was Candace like Candace Kane, you know, with Candace Kane, dancing. Kevin Aviance. Yeah, all I of mean, them. like, uh, there's so that yeah. I moved to New York in the late '90s, and that was still going strong. Mm -hmm. Like those shows downstairs at the Fez, mm -hmm. the Public Theater, and that was when I first saw you. And so it's so exciting to finally get you here I'm to happy chat. To be here. <laughs> Now you've had so many great, you've had some really enduring roles. 
uh, starting with Trek, right? Mm -hmm. That was that you your first. That was your first feature. No, I did a, a movie years before that that wasn't very good. So I don't even I don't talk about that one. And then I did Tu Wong Fu. Oh, so Tu Wong Fu was before Trek. Yes. Oh, okay. Tu Wong so, Fu was before Trek. That was the big one. And we were talking yeah. before the show yeah. that. At that time, when they made Tu Wong Fu, they put out a casting call yes. to all of New York drag. Which I didn't know. I thought, like, <laughs> I, I, you know, I was trained in the theater, and you would go to an audition, and you, you might meet other actors in the hallway, but right. they pulled you into the room one at a time. So that's what I expected. Yeah. And I walk up the staircase, and I'm, I'm, I'm still insecure to this day. But anyway, I was especially insecure going to an audition and whatnot for a big Hollywood movie. Yeah. And I open this big metal door, and like, it's a room like this, but filled with the creme de la creme of New York drag, <laughs> who are all vying for a role in this Hollywood and all movie. Done, and right? everyone's done. <laughs> At like you know two in the afternoon, and this you know, and this is what I was met with. You know, everyone just like turned, <laughs> gave the look, and then mm hmm, <laughs> and went back to their thing. And I, my, I literally said, leave. That's what I told my wow. walk, turn around and walk out. But I kept walking in. And if you really want to hear that, can I tell the story? Yeah, I want to hear well, it. Well, anyway, they lined us up. Um, Kenny Ortega was the choreographer. Yeah. He lined us up on either side of the room and said. At one at a time, you're going to work this imaginary runway. Uh huh. And I don't work runways. Right. That is like. No, that's not that's what Coco does. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I'm thinking, oh dear God, he puts on the music and one by one, you know, Candace, can, you know, the legs up here. This right. One, th th these queens from Esquilita doing splits. And the, I thought if I did that, I would die and my wig would fly out the window. <laughs> right. So I thought, well, do the opposite of what they're doing. Like, don't give them anything. Uh huh. And then I thought, and I need a prop. I need a prop, and I saw an empty plastic cup, and I just thought, that'll be my prop. So my way of working the runway was just to walk. I took a sip. I walked to this end, worked the pole by taking a sip, walked in, and finished, finished my cocktail, and then crushed the glass and turned and walked back. And as I walked back, I thought to myself, well, I, as I walked back, all the queens that were lined up, as I walked by them, were, girl, you are fierce. Girl, you are fierce. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I probably didn't get the movie, but at least these queens think I'm fierce. <laughs> That's what was most important to me. And then I, I ended up getting it, and they kept that whole cup-crushing thing in, in there. And then, and then Trick came along. Right. Which was another thing where um, my fr I wasn't in the movie originally. Right. You did it just as a favor as at a the favor reading, right? As a favor at the reading yeah. for Jim Fall, who was my friend. He said, would you help me audition people? I said, sure. And then he thought I was so funny. He said, would you do the play the part of what uh, Tori Spelling ended up playing? And so I did the reading. And then everyone said, you got to keep the drag queen in the movie. So they wrote me a scene. They were kind enough to let me rewrite it. Yeah. To make it really my own. Uh-huh. And then I did that. And, you know, when you think back, most of the things that have scared me in my life were the things that were most rewarding. Right. And also, I think, say yes. Like, you got to say yes to most things. You definitely do. Because you know, I think I could have easily said that day on the phone to Jim. No, I don't want to help you audition people. I'm, I'm busy or, you uh -huh. know, I'm... I, it, you know, but it become, it's become, yeah. son, thank goodness Yeah, yeah, yes. thank God I said yes, because it changed my whole life. I live here in L.A. I mean, everything changed in my life. And it freaks me out when I think about that, because I think of all the times I said no. Right. <laughs> You're like, what could what have been? What could have been? Uh, what could have been, I'm Johnny? I'm here ahead, Queen. Give me another tension yeah. table. Oh, oh, for God's anyway, sake, Johnny. So, yeah. <laughs> but Trick has been one of those movies that has lasted through the ages. And I feel like it's, it's it was that thing that just kept you out there. New generations are yeah. discovering it. And yeah. that part is so iconic. And you look exactly the same. No, I don't. <laughs> it had horrible lighting me on that day. But the, the other thing about Trick was that, you know, at the time, and that was filmed in 98, there were no really gay movies about gay people who are happily, openly gay and looking yeah. for sex, you know, and, and looking for a one-night stand. That didn't exist. It was about uh, coming out and the trial, you know, of coming out to your family or AIDS or it was all these different, you know, stories that were important to tell. Right. But this was the first gay movie. It was like being gay. That was already accepted. Yeah. And, and they were looking for a place to, to have sex. Yeah, I, mean, I remember seeing it in the theater and yeah. being like, finally, a movie yeah. that I can relate to yeah. just as, where gay stuff is normy and not yeah, like yeah, yeah. tragedy yeah. or tears yeah. or whatever.
So it was really fun to be a part of. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and while you were doing all that stuff, you were continually doing one-woman shows, mm -hmm. and you continue to do them to this day. I sure do, yeah. You started at the, where would you do your first show? My first show was at 55 Grove Street, Rose's Turn, right there on Grove Street. Oh, yeah. And I had never done drag before. And really? I, had, yeah, I had this epiphany one day where I said out loud, I'm going to be a drag queen. And like when I said it out loud, it was almost like I heard, you know, hallelujah music in the background. It, it, it literally like everything came into focus in my life. And I knew that that's where my life was going to be. Wow. And like all my fears about it just kind of just disappeared off to the side. I'd seen a Charles Bush show, if you know Charles oh, Bush. Of course, and yeah. And that, that kind of that was got like me. The that was sort of the inspiration. Because you were with a boyfriend I at was. the time when you saw that show. Yes. And you remember wanting to be in it and him in telling it. you you should have been in yes, it. Yes, and I was ashamed that he right. caught me. Yeah. But then it got me thinking. Anyway, I created Coco and and, and, it, and I started writing and, and it all, I just, I just knew it was going to, work for me. I, I did. I, I just knew it would work. I think when you find your passion, you, you on some level know. Now, you might not be making a lot of money, uh -huh. and you might be struggling, mm -hmm. and you might have days of, oh, God, why did I do this? Preach it, Coco. But inside, <laughs> you know. But I know, but be a lady but red, know. no, exactly. You Just know, getting here this morning. <laughs> at 945. Yeah, 945, exactly. I'd like to mention it was in the email, Johnny, that I should have been there at 945. <laughs> Ready to start at 10. Was Sasha here at 945? No, that bitch, no. and she didn't even come dressed. I came dressed. Walking down Santa Monica Boulevard at 945, dressed like this. She's going to work. Just a lady going to work. I She's know. At the secretarial pool. I know. I should join you at Pavilions after. I could pick up a few things myself. How about that? I think you Not that I need to pick up You don't up my need to get tumor, anything I got like your attention. Yes. Yes. Hey. But I could get you like a, a Pantone or something if they have them in stock. Makes a lovely French toast. <laughs> oh, does it? Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not forget to mention the butt ton of money that you have raised for the LA Gay and Lesbian Center with your legendary conversations with Coco. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, tell me about how that started because your first guest was B. Arthur. B. Arthur. Oh, I know. Oh my I know. God. I know. Go, go. I, know. I, was friend, oh. I was friends with B, and I was very afraid to ask her to do it because I know she's very shy. She yeah. was very shy. Yeah. And I asked her, and she said no. Uh huh. And at that time, it was called Cocktails with Coco, and she had struggled her struggles, so right. she didn't want to, you know, play that up. She didn't want to get the get, yeah. get it out there. Like so that. I said, all right, well, I'll change it to Conversations with Coco, and sh then she said yes, and and the, and then she would call me and be like, I better not fucking regret this. Click. <laughs> her drawing is B. Fuck you. Click. <laughs> this is hysterical. Oh my god. So anyway, I, I wish I had saved those messages. I know what a dream you don't that think would of those be. Things, right. But anyway, she um, she did it, and it was amazing. And then um, and then I've done uh, I I got to do Charles Bush, which was great because he yeah. was my drag. How idol. very full circle, yeah. yeah. And um, and then I did uh, Karen Black, was yes. amazing. Leslie Ann Warren, which I loved, such a great actress. Victoria, Liza Minnelli, Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, and most recently I did. Um, Alice and Janney, and she was great. They're all so good. Yeah. And I mean, do you know what the total is, Rachel? Right? I know Liza Minnelli alone was like 45,000 bucks she, she raised. She was 45,000 we raised that night. And then these two queens that I know flew in from Florida to see the show. They have a lot of money. God and bless. they said, how much did you raise? We said 45. They said, we'll throw an extra five, make it an even 50. All right. So we made 50,000 that night. I don't know how much we, we've made in, in total for those those things, but um, I know that they um, benefit the 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 gay homeless kids that get kicked out of their homes and, yeah. and have nowhere to go. And, it's super and when important. you meet these kids, they, they sometimes get to come see my shows. And they're adorable. They're so beautiful. And you think, who could ever kick these beautiful kids out of a house? But they do. And the, the center's there to help them. Yeah, and that's really important it stuff important. to do. It's awesome. You know, I was blessed. My When I came out to my parents, they hugged me. And, and they had experienced the loss of a child Yeah. Uh, when my sister passed away. So they were just happy I was alive. and <laughs> Which is a good way yeah. for parents to feel. Yeah, and that's the way parents yeah, should feel. all the time. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we have another special someone coming out She's to join so you. She's not so special. She's average. Well, oh. she is not only hosting Drag Queens of Comedy, right. but she is 
producing it with all that donut money on it. <laughs> so let's take a look at the trailer for Drag Queens of Comedy. Oh, and when trailer. we come back, we'll be with Sasha Soprano as well. Let's take a look. Uh, it was great. I had a great time. It was exciting. The audience was amazing. San Francisco so far gets a thumbs up in their butt because that's what they like. Right? Okay. Thank you. There she is, Miss Sasha Soprano. Hunty, the big show is coming up May 23rd. Yes, May 23rd. Who, other than the legend herself, who is on the show? It's a great lineup. Um, Jackie B, Shangela, Michelle Visage is hosting. Oh, wonderful. Yes. So Michelle Visage is hosting, or are you hosting too? I'm not hosting. So you're I, not, I'm you're a step, terrible you host. You stepped down from that. Yes, yes. I. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I just. No. You but. were a lovely host. I thought you were terrific, but I'm you're a better, but you're I'm better, a better host you're, at like you're, my you're doing house. the comedy this yeah. year. You're doing a, a, yeah. your own set this year. Uh, you got a Peaches and Heclina, yes. Bianca, Alaska. Well, I usually have my cheat sheet in front of me. Uh -huh. Anytime I'm on the phone, I have the poster in front right. of me because there's so many. You know. Well, there are a lot of queens of yeah. comedy on that stage. Yes. It's going to be great. It's, it's, I'm excited, so. Now, you, now, like Coco said, you got that daddy money, honey, but I love that you are using it for the art of the drag queens of comedy. That's so exciting. Well, it's mommy money. Mommy money, yeah, sorry. My dad, yeah. my dad was a gold digger. Oh, yeah, so, all right then. Yeah. <laughs> She'll give me a call and she's like, how fucking dare you? How dare Am you? Am I allowed to swear? Yes, oh, the internet. <laughs> you know anything you want. Fuck. <laughs> fuck, Lady Red Wine, you yell, shout it out. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, oh, yes. Lady Red. Eat that chicken, bitch. <laughs> Let's be, I, you know, I brought her a gift. You did? I did. I brought I brought some cookies. Lady Red, did you hear that? It's on in cracking full circle, bitch. Some Girl Scout cookies. Yes. Uh, oh, wonderful. You tell them the story about how the, the uh, Girl well, Scout you bought them from. Well, so I have this lovely lady. She always comes to the show, supports me, Facebooks, everything. But she had a, she lives in this place called Copperopolis. I had to Google it. Okay. You know. <laughs> and I I her address I Googled and I saw it was just a big old dirt road. Wow. So um, I was like, well, how is she know supposed to meet her quota of cookies? Right. You know, it's like a drug cartel of cookies. <laughs> okay. So I just said, just send me what you know she needs to purchase. So I bought them all. Oh, wow. So um, I have now at my house, when people come up, like pizza delivery man, Chinese food, anyone comes, there's my mahogany table right at the entrance and ah! stacked stacked with cookies. Girl so I just, Scout cookies. Yeah. And it's she cookie only time. brought you two. We, yeah. <laughs> and they're vegan. They're vegan. Oh, really? Yeah, they're oh, vegan. Wonderful. Uh, Don't tell that to Lady Red. Vegan does not mean there are vegetables in it, Lady Red. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> There's no <laughs> vegetables in those cookies, vegetable Lady Red. Vegetable oil. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even tell her vegetable oil. She'll think it's a vegetable. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> but yes. So you started doing this show at when you were 25 producing the show. Yes, yes. 25 for this specific show. Right. Yes. And then your original big production was when you were 23. Yes. I mean, The girl. original one was a hot mess. Right. With some big names, though. You know, um, I just walked past the Castro Theater, and I grew up on Castro. So, um, and I'd passed that theater my whole life, and I never stepped foot until one day I walked by, and Joan Rivers' poster was right in front. And I said, oh, they do shows here. Um, well, you know, I want to do a show. So I just walked in, uh, asked them how much, wrote a check, um, got the place. I had. <laughs> That's how you do a show, right? Yes, yeah. bitch. That yeah. is how you do a show. <laughs> <laughs> it was Nene Leaks and Lonnie Love were my first show. And oh. then I learned right then and there Drag Queens Only. Oh, girl. And nice ones, <laughs> which then came to, you know, the whole thing of how I want, how I get to, how do I get to work with her? Right. So it sounds like an amazing, it's such an amazing lineup and such an amazing historic theater. It, is. it should be a really exciting show. It's going to be May twenty third, 
at the in San Francisco at the Castro. And where can they get tickets? www.dqoc.com. Oh, that yeah. is wonderful. Yeah, we shortened it up. There's another drag queen of comedy you should book for next year. Her name was Lady Red Couture. Yeah. And her partner, who also does drag, but butch drag. <clears throat> <laughs> we were available. <laughs> I'm so excited that you guys can be yeah, part of this. Yeah, I am it. too. And thank you for, for having us. And thank you for keeping it real and being an inspiration for uh, for uh, all those kids out there that get to, to see it on YouTube. Bless you, Coco Peru. You guys have both been such delights that you snatched some trophies, darling. Yeah. 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 And you both get to share a lap dance! Yeah! yeah. Now do it good, Tyler, on both sides. Yeah. Front and back. Front and back. Front and back. Front and back. Front and yeah. back. You can touch it. Oh, I yeah. am. Yeah. He's a gold oh, 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 oh. You like your daddy, your gold digger. Yeah, get him. Work that ass. Go, go, work that ass. Go, go, work that ass. Too much fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lady Red, take us out with some black lady screaming, baby. Black In the Hey Queen after show, Sasha and Coco will be here and they're gonna play Look at Her. So you don't wanna miss this, click the link wherever the hell it is. And we'll see you next time on Hey Queen. Bye, baby! Yay! <laughs>